uh, boy, that was uh, that was something. You know, uh, you really you really wonder how much of a pain in the neck it was to, uh, to 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 film it this way, and you really wonder how much time they could spend on on making this a, a really good movie, and how much time was mostly just trying to get these takes in. You would think that that you know this is only 80 minutes long. It took 10 continuous takes or so. Uh, you would think they'd be able to wrap. You would think they'd be able to wrap this thing up in a couple of weeks, but no, this this took a long time because. Uh, um, it, it just did. It was a nightmare, and the actors kept flubbing their lines, and they'd start they'd have to start all over again. The film was very, very expensive, so uh, that was a stressful thing. I mean, Alfred Hitchcock talks about moments where, um, you know, they, they'd be seven, eight minutes into a take, everything would be perfect, and the camera would pan over, and there would be some guy standing there holding a, a, a light or something. Cut. So, uh, so yeah, it really. Uh, uh, was was a tough thing. They also filmed a whole bunch of stuff, and and it was when the the sun was setting and the skyline. But then when they looked at it, it looked stupid. It looked orange, so they had to reshoot days and days worth. So uh, so yeah, Alfred Hitchcock actually called this uh, I don't know the exact quote, but something like it was an experiment that didn't quite work. And uh, the the film was actually out of circulation for for quite a long time. It was tough to get. In fact, I think it only came back into circulation in 1968 when it was shown on television. Um, or, or something like that. It might have even have taken longer. He, he was quite happy for it to, to be out of it because he wasn't, he wasn't happy with it. It was not popular with audiences. Um, it didn't make any money. Not, not a very good start for transatlantic pictures. Um, there's also something uh, that uh, was, was going on with this that, that Philip and Brandon may or may not have been lovers. And uh, th th there's probably a little bit of that in the original play. But uh, you better believe when the, the censors got wind of the fact that they were the Hitchcock was doing this movie, they needed to see the script, and any hint of anything had to be taken right out of the movie. And and you know, there's a bit at the beginning where we're realizing that David's fiance, who's spending the whole movie saying, "Where's Where's David?" Um, John Dahl alludes to the fact that him and her used to be boyfriend girlfriend. So I mean, I, I, you could watch that whole thing and have no idea that they were uh, they were they were you know. Uh, what are we calling them? Lovers. Um, and even uh, uh, James Stewart's character, there was a bit of a hint with that and, and whatever. But, but some audiences didn't like that. Some theaters uh, refused to play the movie. Uh, apparently on set, everybody knew that the film was about it, about this. And um, one of the reasons that actually Alfred Hitchcock wanted Montgomery Cliff to play in this film, and Montgomery Cliff, who was a homosexual, uh, did not want to be in it because he didn't want there to be any hint that he, uh, he, he was this way. Uh, allegedly, same with Cary Grant. He's like, nah, I don't want to do this. And, uh, you know, uh, good for, for uh, Jim, Jim, James Stewart for not minding. And uh, I don't know, like I say, you could watch this whole thing and not have any. Did you have any idea when you watched it the first bunch of times? So, I don't know, maybe because we're over it, and uh, who knows, but, uh, but uh, whatever. Diane's favorite line in the movie was, Mary Pickford. <laughs> and uh, it was also neat when they were talking about that new film with What's-His-Face and What's-Her-Face, they were talking about Notorious. They were talking about Cary Grant and Ingrid, Berg Ingrid Bergman in, in the film Notorious. So, uh, we also liked that it was short and sweet. I mean, 80 minutes is a nice amount of time for a movie. And, you know, even though this was not popular with audiences at the time, and didn't make any money. This is a big Alfred Hitchcock film. I mean, people when they talk about their top five or top ten, ten, ten Alfred Hitchcock movies, they always mention Rope. And you know, I watched it thinking, neat. You know, it's neat that it's it's that the, they're spliced all together. And you know, you might find that distracting and say it wasn't very good. But uh, I don't know. I thought it was good and and certainly very Hitchcockian. He didn't write it. It's based on this play, but uh, you know the whole idea of discussing murder over dinner. How many times have we seen that? Now we're having dinner over like a murder victim, so uh, very, very good and very suspenseful. I mean, if you didn't know whether they were going to get away with it or not, uh, you know, it had you on the edge, edge of your seat and very clever how uh, James, James Stewart sees the initials in his hat and realized that David had been there that day, etc., etc. So uh, uh, I, I liked it. it. It's good stuff. Um, a couple of things. Boy, the look on, uh, on, on Philip's face, that there's like 30 different times when he just looks positively ill. He has the worst poker face in the world. It wouldn't take a genius to figure out that something is wrong with Philip. And, and speaking of Philip, that was the worst stunt piano playing in the history of the world. That song was driving Diane crazy. She didn't care for it one little bit. And, um, you know, I, I'm not sure if Father Granger could play the piano or not, but that was horrible. That reminded me of all the comments we had about Spellbound, where uh, 
where Gregory Peck is skiing with Ingrid Bergman, and uh, that skiing was was pretty fake, and uh, this this was fake as well. So yeah, this was not uh, uh, not popular. And and the other thing that kind of bugged me is that that whole time that we were frustrated watching those early Hitchcock movies, like The Skin Game. Um, Alfred Hitchcock was, was kind of mad that he had to, he had to film a, pl a play, and he said, it's just boring, there's no way to create cinema. Well, you just filmed a play, and although he definitely had the camera being like it was a character, I mean, following around and, you know, leaving one conversation, drifting off into a whole another conversation, I mean, that was very clever, but, I mean, ultimately, we still had the sense that we were watching a play, and uh, I'm not sure, uh, I'm not sure uh, it worked in that regard, but uh, those are the worst brandy, or rather, those are the worst champagne glasses in the history of the world. They're martini glasses. You can't drink champagne in, the, in those, so obviously they didn't know what they are doing. And uh, I don't know if you, saw, if you saw the cameo, a little bit at the front with that guy walking. Allegedly, that was Alfred Hitchcock. It's not been confirmed, but definitely the neon sign, the profile that says Reduso on the bottom, a nice homage to uh, the Lifeboat cameo. But um, yeah, that's, uh, that's good. So, so uh, a word about 1948, because we're now done with 1948. Uh, best picture that year was Hamlet, particularly Laurence Olivier's Hamlet. And uh, I checked that one out. It's, it's pretty good. I mean, it's, it's a four-hour play, but he, he whittled it down, and uh, the men can act. I hate to be this painfully obvious to say, well, Laurence Olivier can act, but uh, it was worthwhile. Um, there, there was actually some really good movies from 1948. Treasure of the Sierra Madre was from 1948 with Humphrey Bogart, and that's, a, that's just an amazing movie. But uh, one that we had not seen before, we would mentioned Montgomery Clift a few minutes ago, there's a movie called The Search, uh, which was his first movie, but not the first movie he made. The first movie he made was Red River with John Wayne. It just took him forever to release it. So uh, the second movie he made turns out to be the first release. It's called The Search. And it's filmed in Berlin, present day, 1948, and this is an excellent movie. I had never heard of it, but uh, boy, if you like Montgomery Clift, and there's this little kid in it who was not an actor, he was just a real uh, little kid in, in Berlin, and uh, yeah, he got, he got an Oscar for the, this child performance, and it, it probably ruined his life, because then he was uh, living in, in East Berlin behind the Iron Curtain, and uh, that wasn't a good move, so it's a long story, but... Uh, yeah, the search. So very good. So good. We're done with rope, and uh, we've got next week's film, the second and pretty much final uh, transatlantic pictures movie uh, called Under Capricorn that we're looking forward to. Uh, of course, with Ingrid Bergman and, and Joseph Cotton. So um, yeah, we'll uh, we'll see you then. And so from our couch to yours, we shall see you next week.